الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاۃ والسلام علی سید الانبیاء والمرسلین دس از مجیب قاضی اینڈ یو ار واچنگ ڈیلس راؤنڈ اپ ان کنورسیشن وتھ ڈاکٹر وائلی آئی ایم این ایبسولوٹلی تھرلڈ اینڈ آنر ٹو ہیو سچ این اسٹیم گیسٹ وتھ می ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ ون اف دا موسٹ امپورٹنٹ سبجیکٹ دیٹ وی ایز مسلمز ایوری ایئرز وی وی ار ویٹنگ فار دس ڈے دیٹ دا منتھ اف ذل حجا کمز اینڈ وی ول آل رش ٹو Uh, Makkah and Mukarma and perform Hajj and pilgrimage. Unfortunately, for the last two years, because of the COVID-19, we have not been able to visit the holy places and not been able to reap the fruits of this beautiful month. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful, all great. He has blessed us with many other options. What are those options? What are the virtues of month of Zulhajja, particularly the very first days? So we will... apprise ourselves in conversation with Dr. Wiley to un- make us understand uh, and give us the virtues of the month and the, particularly the very first 10 days that we all talk about. Uh, let me uh, introduce Dr. Wiley uh, to the show. Dr. Wiley, thank you so very much for joining us and Jazakallah for, khair for giving us the time today. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, akhi Mujib Abu Ibrahim. I'm so happy, walillahi alhamd, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen for allowing me to be on your show. Asal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yanfa'na. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us beneficial, inshallah, for others, for ourselves, to give us hidayah, guidance, and to give the others hidayah. And I begin, if you allow me, inshallah, to make a dua, inshallah, before the beginning, a dua for myself, for you, for our families and all our communities, and especially fi ardina fi Palestine and Palestine and in Kashmir and all bilad al-Muslimin. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep all the Muslim countries victorious. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me and you and all our beloved brothers and sisters all over the world to be with our Habib al-Mustafa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the highest place in Jannah. Ameena, ya Rabbil Alameen. And I want to start just with a, a short dua. Allahumma a'inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. This dua was taught by Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the famous companion Mu'ad ibn Jabal. رضي الله عنه والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم تل المعاد بن جبل او معاد after every prayer before taslim you say this beautiful dua اللهم اعني على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك يا الله يا الله give me the health give me the strength give me the help ya allah so i can remember you so i can worship you so i can thank you ya allah in the best way that you deserve and you love, Ya Allah. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all the health, the beautiful health, the goodness in this dunya and in the hereafter. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be among those shakirin, those who give shukr, those who give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every single moment of their life. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the health and the strength so we can remember to make dhikr of Allah every moment of our life. Amina ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa nasal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be among those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pleased with yawm al-qiyamah. Wa nasal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us victorious. Amina ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakallah khair, a beautiful beginning. Uh, you know, every time uh, we stand up behind you on the Friday prayers, and when you make this dua that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite us with Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that always touches my heart and it always trembles me. So Jazakallah khair for helping us all in your dua and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your sincerity. Let's, uh, let's, let's start our conversation with the first question. there is a misconception i would not say misconception conception, but we we are we the general public generally is confused between what is more virtuous the last 10 days of month of ramadan or the first 10 days of uh, zilhijja uh, i know wow. it. so let's start off with this conversation and see see if we can uh, understand and then we will uh, further dive into it inshallah laziz <coughs> بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحابته ومن والاه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله We always go to the scholars, to the ulama, to our teachers 
what are the best days. So it's very, I'm going to make it very easy and very simple. Will be no confusion. When we are in the, in the month of Ramadan, we take the best nights. The best nights is the last nights of the month of Ramadan, which are the, be, the last 10, the odd numbers, the 21st, the 23rd, the 25th, 27th, 29th. So the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan are the best nights because why? They have Laylatul Qadr, better than 1,000 months, right? Laylatul Qadr khayru min alfi shahr. That's why they made that they chose the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan are the best nights. Okay, mm. you with me now? Yes. Now we go to the 10 days. Now days, not nights. The 10 days of the Hijjah are the best 10 days of the whole entire year. Where Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Afdal ayyam dunya Afdal ayyam dunya <clears throat> They are the best 10 days of the whole entire year. Why? They have the Hajj, right? The pilgrimage, and they have Yawm Arafah, right? That's why they made these 10 days <coughs> of the Hijjah are the best 10 days. So if you have the 10 nights, would be in the month of Ramadan, the last 10 nights, and the 10 days would be of the Hijjah, the first 10 days of the Hijjah. Jazakallah khair. You see, that's, that's a beautiful clarification because mm -hmm. there is a difference between both 10 days are virtuous but uh, in month of Ramadan, it's nights, and in Zil Hijjah, these are the days. Now, yes. we know in month of Ramadan, we are asked to stand up in Traweeh, read Quran, and stay engaged in worship all night long. And during the daytime, we fast. What are the Sunnah and recommended uh, virtues or worships that are uh, beneficial for the Ummah to observe during the first 10 days of Zil Hijjah? Yes, uh, Brother Mujib, yeah. I want to I want to mention every day, every day the Muslim, the Mu'min, the believer should invest with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala with Salah, with Siyam, Quran, uh, Quran, Dhikr of Allah, recitation the Book of Allah. Do not wait only to ten days of the Hijjah or the month of Ramadan to be busy in ibadah, in a ta'a, in the worship of Allah. The Muslim, the believer should be always engaged with the ibadah and ta'a every single day of their life. Do not wait till the month of Ramadan, I'm going to make Qiyam al-Layl. I'm going to make read the Quran. I'm going to make Siyam, fasting. Can you guarantee yourself you're going to witness Ramadan? Can you witness, you're going to, uh, you're going to witness the Hijjah, the 10 days of the Hijjah? You cannot <clears throat> because the moat, the death comes anytime, unannounced. So the mu'min, the believer, every day you wake up, <clears throat> alhamdulillah, Busy in the worship of Allah. But Alhamdulillah, Allah give us certain days of the year to boost our Iman, right? To have more energy, to invest with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Muslim shouldn't be in a ghafla, in a state of heedless, you know, because the uh, ulama said, Inna hadil umma fi ghafla, wa la illa inda al -maut. These people in a state of ghafla and heedless, they're subhanAllah busy in dunya and they don't wake up till death comes. SubhanAllah, it'll be too late. So, my beloved ones, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who had a hadith, Ibn Abbas, and radiallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma min ayyam, la amalu salhu fi hinna ahabu ila Allah min hadil ayyam. This is Ibn Abbas, radiallahu alayhi He said, the best days and the most beloved amal, loved deed to Allah in these 10 days. Yani, that means Fajr prayer. The best treasure prayer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves from me and you. Dhuhr prayer, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. Make sure the obligatory. You know, this is Alhamdulillah, your salawat. Hafidhu ala khams salawat. Every Alhamdulillah, you have five daily prayers. Make sure these are fard. Make sure you do these first. Then it comes to voluntarily. Fabni Abbas radiallahu anh, he mentioned this hadith and Ma'akhi Mujib. Uh, whenever Ibn Abbas mentioned this hadith, what did he do? He didn't say asleep. He went and vanished. He disappeared. Where's Ibn Abbas? He was busy in ibadah. He was busy in these a'mal al-saliha. A'mal al-saliha, the good, righteous, good deeds. What are they? Alhamdulillah, your salah. Number one, your prayers. Number two, qiraat al-Quran. Alhamdulillah, recitation of the book of Allah. Uh, number three, qiyam al-layl. Alhamdulillah. And making uh, obedience to parents. Bear al-walidain. We're going to talk about that later, inshallah. 
فالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم give us an advice what we should do يا رسول الله in these 10 days فأكثروا فيهن من التهليل والتحميد والتكبير means ذكر of Allah the best عمل the best deed you can do in these 10 days يا أخي مجيب are members of Allah فأكثروا فيهن يعني منشن too much in the remembrance of Allah التهليل والتكبير والتحميد يعني الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد You are saying the most beloved words to Allah سبحانه وتعالى يعني يا الله there is no God but you يا الله لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله you are the greatest يا الله nothing greater than you يا الله الحمد لله I'm thanking you يا الله I'm praising to you I'm praising you يا الله so you keeping your tongue busy making ذكر making remembrance of Allah so أبا هريرة رضي الله عنه the most famous companion of Rasul صلى who narrated four thousand more than four thousand ahadith to be exact. 4,374 ahadith of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu. So Abu Hurairah and Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, jami'an, they used to go to the market, to the aswaq, to the souk, and they say with a loud voice, the beginning of the 10 days of the hijjah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. They go in the markets and they say with a loud voice, okay? And the people who hears them, they repeat with them. So alhamdulillah, especially in aswaq. Why in aswaq in the markets? Because people busy in dunya, buying and selling, right? And Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, telling the people, mention the name of Allah. Whenever you have the dhikr of Allah, the lisan, be busy and moist in the remembrance of Allah, Allah will give you barakah. Allah will give you blessings with your health, with your wealth, with your families. Alhamdulillah, whenever you mention the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayuha al-lazina amanu, udhkuru Allah dhikran kathira, wa sabbihuhu bukrata wa asila. Oh, who you believe, remember Allah too much in the remembrance in the morning in the afternoon, in the evening. Keep your lisan, your tongue, busy with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the best amal, akhi uh, mujib, to, to do, do is make the remembrance of Allah, dhikr of Allah. Nasallallah an nakuna min al We ask Allah to be among those who always mention and remember Allah in every moment of our life. So where does the uh, sacrifice of uh, animal comes into play and the family? So I would have a a multi-dimensional question so you can incorporate the answers and I know uh, the one of the good thing about uh, you know mashallah your approach is that you don't diverge yourself into the masail of fiqh so the people can you know have a freedom of whoever they want to pick and choose and follow but just give us the general general idea of what are the prerequisites of sacrifice who would have to do this sacrifice Will the entire <laughs> family members have to do one animal or each animal for each member of the family? Just give us that rundown if you could, please. And uh, Yes. Uh, Subhanallah, as you know, this is Eid al-Adha, right? The Eid al-Adha, the Eid of sacrifice, Qurbani. So that means we need to sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you do the, the slaughter after the Eid prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, pray first, then go ahead and slaughter. So you do not slaughter before Salat al-Eid. Okay, Mujib, it's very important. Whenever you want to slaughter, make sure you attend Salat al-Eid, the Eid prayer. Then you go ahead and slaughter. And you have three days, Ayam Tashrik, to slaughter. You have the day of the Eid and you have three more days. So Alhamdulillah, it's open. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So make sure you pray the Eid prayer first and then you go ahead and slaughter. And Ya Habbati Fillah, whenever you make a slaughter, make sure you let your children see it as well. 
That way they know this is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sunnah Ibrahim alayhi salam. And, and you show your children, this is our, uh, you know, how the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is our adat and taqaleed. So whenever they see this animal, they see this bloodshed, walillahi alhamd. So they, whenever they grow up, alhamdulillah, I see my father doing this, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And, and I advise my brother Mujib to remember our brothers fi Kashmir, fi Palestine, fi Bilad al-Yemen, fi Syria, in Syria, Bilad al-Yemen, Palestine, Kashmir, Bangladesh, all the people in Africa who are in need. Wallahi akhi Mujib, whenever the animal, the sacrifice, Udhiya, reaches uh, Africa or Kashmir, these people do not eat meat like me and you. Wallahi alhamd, we have full tables. Wallahi alhamd, Allah bless us. But these people don't see meat like me and you. So they, may, they might taste the meat once a year. And they have the farha, the happiness, whenever they see the meat. So I advise people, me and you, to slaughter here at home and send, alhamdulillah, give us money, wealth, and go ahead, send to Kashmir, to Palestine, to Africa, to Yemen, to Syria, to Syria and Syria. That way they, they have the farha, they have the happiness. Alhamdulillah, you get lots of reward. So whenever, the, if you do it, the sheep, uh, or the sacrifice here in the U.S., make sure the first third, you divide it three thirds. The first third for yourself and your family, your wife, your children, your father, your mother, alhamdulillah, that's one third. And the second third for the dearest friend, your family, your brother, your sister, your friend, go ahead. And the last third to the fuqara and the masakin, for those needy and those who are poor, Okay, so three thirds, very easy and simple. Again, the first third for you and your family. The second third is for the closest relatives. And number three for the fuqara and the masakin. And the udhiya for every household. Akhi Mujib and his family, that's one udhiya. For his brother and his family, that's one udhiya. Alhamdulillah. So every household. So if me and my wife, my parents live in one house, that's one udhiya. So like if me, my family, then my son lives in another house, so my son have to do his own sacrifice for his household. But alhamdulillah, so, and every hair, wallahi be witness for you, yawm al-qiyamah. Every hair, alhamdulillah, hasana. Imagine <coughs> how many hairs the, the sheep or the goat has. This wallahi, alhamdulillah, and, and wallahi, ahabbati fillah, this is Allah doesn't want the meat or nothing, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, to for me and you to reach our beloved one and they they we, they they uh they join us with the happiness of Eid al Adha. So what I understand from your elaboration is that one household, one sacrifice, one animal, and that animal could be a camel, a cow or a sheep. Is that how it's going to work? Yes, yes. Uh, the camel, uh, the camel, because it's huge. As you know, there's ten. Uh, there's ten people can be together. Can be together, uh, like me and you and eight more people. We do a camel because the camels are huge. Al Bakara, Al Bakara is the cow. Seven people could be partnership, but the goat and the sheep could be one person. So it's very easy and very simple, and we don't want to complicate things. But yeah. I want to make sure Eid al Adha. To do one for your family, alhamdulillah, okay. if you have the wealth, inshallah, may Allah yeah. give us barakah and all our wealth, inshallah, and make sure to send off, make sure to send off, don't be, alhamdulillah, with you and your family and the other people starving fi biladina, fi ardina in our countries. So what you're suggesting is that, uh, uh, you know, it's good to have a one sacrifice here in, in this country where you have your children to see it and then uh, practice it and then make sure they're not first in. But the best thing is to send the money back in those countries or have credible people who are on the ground can sacrifice and then, then the animal meat can be distributed to the people who are in need of that help. So that with the real purpose of sacrifice is to sharing with the people who cannot afford to um, uh, eat, you yes. know, the, the meal or, food or, 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 you know, and the reviving the sunnah of uh, Sayyidina uh, is, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam. Uh, so, so the so the sacrifice is done. Uh, the you know the meat has been distributed. Now there is a question that the youth generally tend to shy away from. You know the, there are there are people who are proponents of you know how to slaughter animal 
you know, that's cruel way of cutting it and whatnot. How do we encounter that challenge for our youth? Because our youth is also, while living in this country, they, they, they are uh, probably sometimes having these questions in their mind that uh, why do we have to sacrifice certain way? Uh, so would you elaborate a little bit about that so our youth can understand the importance of sacrifice, importance of slaughtering an animal? Yes. It's very, very important. I, I thank you to bring this point because the sheep and the animal, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Erhamu man fir ardi, erhamukum man fis sama. Have mercy on those one on earth. Allah will have mercy on you in the heavens. And uh, wallahi, sometimes you see on the videos, on Facebook or the internet, how people, they torture the animal. Wallahi, sometimes they, they slaughter the animal and the animal could be in a torture because they're not professional, you know, so we always leave it to the professional. You want to get the reward? Alhamdulillah. You know, it's good to slaughter it yourself. Say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Go ahead and you do it. Alhamdulillah. But to Allah, a lot of brothers like me, subhanAllah, I'm not a professional slaughter. So I make, you know, I attend and I, I would be there witness when the brother doing the slaughter for me. And he might just say, okay, let me hold the knife and he show you how to do it. That way we don't torture the animal because this is a soul as well. And in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Akhi Mujib, Allah sent, Allah sent Sayyidina Muhammad Rahma Lil Alameen. Allah sent Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a mercy for all mankind. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to show us how to slaughter the animal. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when you have a knife, don't show it to the animal. You know, hold, hold the knife behind your back, hide it. Because SubhanAllah, the animals, they see the knife and they get scared, SubhanAllah. And you know how here, sometime Akhi uh, Mujib, uh, here the Americans or you know how they slaughter sometimes they they hit with a hammer the the animal they hit him with a hammer on top of the head and the animal gets so dizzy and then then they slaughter it you know so they go through a torture before the killing and some people like Mujib they shock they shock the animal you know they give him electric shock and the animal he subhanallah this is not the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us say Bismillah be gentle hide the knife and make sure the knife very sharp like Mujib. You know, sometimes the knife maybe is not sharp. So whenever you're slaughtering the, the animal being tortured, subhanAllah. For Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a man comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, listen to this beautiful hadith, Akhi Mujib. Say, Ya Rasulullah, whenever I slaughter my sheep, my animal, I have mercy. You know, I have a rahmah on this animal. For Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, uh, Rasulullah was so happy. And he said, whenever you have rahmah on this animal, Allah will have rahmah, mercy on you, yawm al-qiyamah. So if you do not know how to slaughter, leave it for the professional. Leave it for the professional. Make sure the knife is so sharp. Uh, make sure uh, you say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Uh, and you have the niyyah and have the ikhlas, have the intention. And Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And you know how to chop the, the meat, how to clean it, Alhamdulillah. So this is the, uh, this is the main uh, point of slaughtering the animal and, and how will Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam follow the footsteps of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and make sure to have mercy on this animal. In the, so in a nutshell, I'm going to ask you to conclude it also. So the 10 days we should uh, busy ourselves uh, fasting. Yeah. We, didn't, we, we didn't touch on that, but I, I heard yeah. that, you know, fasting is very virtuous. And obviously, yes. keep, keeping yourself busy in a car and planning to have a sacrifice on the day of Eid or within three days and sharing with the family and, and those who are in need. So if we, you know, plan ourselves to maximize, uh, to get the maximum, maximum reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by engaging into these good acts, uh, and then, inshallah, these 10 days will be more virtuous. I want you to conclude uh, the, how would you spend your last uh, first 10 days of Zul Hijjah in, in two minutes? Yeah. Yes, uh, my brother Mujib, Shaykh al Islam bin Taymiyyah, uh, the big scholar, he said, any ibadat, any ta'at, especially like in the month of Ramadan, the Hijjah, whatever your heart feel comfortable at, that means, I mean, Sheikh Wael, I love to do fast in Siyam voluntarily. Mm. My brother Mujib, he likes to do Qiyam al layl right? We have brother Ali, he likes to do recitation of the Quran. So everybody have a different desire of ibadah. 
Me, alhamdulillah, I love fasting. So mm. alhamdulillah. Uh, and uh, and Mr. Mujib, he likes to do Qiyam al layl And we have to do recitation of the Quran. Fasiyam, uh, fasiyamu. La mithlala wa la idlala. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, nothing like fasting and nothing equal to fasting. But Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, man sama yawman fi sabilillah khayran. Min, uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, whenever you fast one day for the sake of Allah, Allah will give you protection from Jahannam. It's, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala like a shield protecting you from the hellfire. For Siyam, nothing like it. And nothing similar to Siyam. Man sama yawman fi sabilillah. Ba'ad Allah wa jaha'an in nari sab'ina kharifa. Sab'ina sana, sab'ina ama. If you do one, fa- one day of fasting, Allah will remove, Allah will push your face away from hellfire the size of 70 years. 70 years away from the hellfire. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Well, Siyam is healthy. Walillah, alhamd keeps you good health. Walillah, alhamd. Al-Quran. Al-Quran, Katab Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the best mu'allim, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best teacher, and Allah sent the Qur'an. So if you have these two things, Brother Mujib, if you have the Qur'an, and you have the mu'allim, the teacher, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will never be lost. Wallahi, this is my advice, nasiha, for myself, for my beloved ones, the young ones, and my brothers and sisters. Make sure you hold on to Kitabullah, the Qur'an, our guide, and to follow the sunnah, of a teacher, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whenever you have the Quran in your life, in your heart, and you have the amal, you have the action following the footsteps of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how can you be lost? How can you be lost? Wallahi, brother Mujib, the, the problem, our situation, the Muslim ummah all over the world, they are far away from the sunnah. They're not following the sunnah of Rasulullah. They don't have Quran in their hearts, in their lives. So what happened to the ummah? And we mean you, we make dua for Palestine. We make a dua for Al Kashmir. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delaying our dua. Why? Because we are far away from the sunnah. We're not following the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, tansuru Allah yansurukum wa yuthabbit aqdamakum. Oh, who you believe, give nusra to Allah. Give victory to Allah. Allah doesn't want me and you, but Allah wants us to return and come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by following his book and follow the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahi akhir mujib, if Rasulullah alayhi wa sallam living in our days now, if a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam living in our life today, and he see what's happening in Palestine, what's happening in Kashmir, what's happening in Yemen, what's happening in Syria, what will he say? What he will say when he see a zulm, it's, it's widespread oppression, what he gonna say? He say, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. We all belong to Allah and to him we shall return. So my advice to return to the book of Allah and to follow the sunnah of Habib Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah to make the Quran our medicine for our kulub and to have it in our lifestyle and make us follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much for giving us the time and advising us to such an enlightenment of this beautiful message at the end and we would have to leave it right there. We'll inshallah come back to you for more. Until next time, take good care of yourself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.